Alright, so my name is Kostin Marafi. I'm the you know, Power BI Specialist here at the iTrack 365 team. And I'm also the Customer Support Rep, if you've t spoken to me about some of the issues you've had with the system. Uh, today is one of, I think, six Power BI reporting series that we'll be doing. Uh, this one is going to be you know, pretty basic if you're new to Power BI, um, but it also gets into you know, what is the common data service and how can you um, you know, connect your your iTrack database to Power BI using the, uh, the the already built connector. I believe it's called Dataverse now. The name will change, so it's either going to be called CDS or Dataverse. Those are inter interchangeable. Um, you know, we'll talk about general navigation. Um, you know, implementing your database, and then how you can make some changes to my queries and what I've done with the with the model altogether. And then I'll kind of run you guys through the implementation document. And at the very end, if you guys have questions, you know, I'll gladly take your questions. All right, cool. So I'm just going to use the HSC Power BI dashboard as an example. Um, I'm not going to get too in depth with the, the visuals or the actual report. Um, and I'll just talk about sort of what Power BI has to offer. All right, so at the top here, just like you would in Word and Excel, you have, you know, your most commonly used buttons. Um, this get data one, this is how you will connect to SQL. Connect to Dataverse, um, you know, Excel, OData, whatever you want to do. And if you go along the line, the next important one would be this pencil and paper, pencil and table. This allows you to transform data and get to the Power Query, which I'll talk about more. You can then refresh all your data or your data set using this refresh button. And that's and then the new measure will allow you, just like Excel, you know, to equal sum of two columns. And you can create, you know, uh, your calculations using this measure field. And then you have publish, which allows you to publish it to the report server. Um, if there's time in today's session, we, we will go into the report server. Otherwise, it will be its own standalone webinar because there is lots off. And as you go through the tabs, you can kind of see the, the. The features it has available, you can add text boxes, buttons, and these buttons can be used to bookmark. You know, um, you can add Q&A by actually telling the system what terms you want to look for, and you know some other uh, cool features there. When you go into modeling, this is where you can create tables from scratch, easy either using DAX, um, which is like I said, similar to the Excel um, language. You can create some parameters, um, some roles, which I won't get into today, but as an example, you know, if you want to create a dashboard that goes across your company, but you only want to allow people from the you know north business unit to see the north business unit um, functions, you're actually able to open up manage roles and say, you know, only show data where business unit equals um, north business unit. And that'll filter out the entire dashboard as long as the relationships are intact and it's pretty simple to use there as well. And when you go to view, this is where the fun stuff happens. You, know, you, can, you can change your themes here. You can customize your current theme by selecting all the colors that you want to, um, you know, surround your, your branding with. And then you can actually hit save current theme in case you're making multiple reports. You can use that theme over and over again. Then on the bottom side here, much like Excel, you have your sheets, and this allows you to flip through the um, the reports and the dashboards. On the right-hand side, you have your filters, and this works on three levels. You have filters on this visual, right, where you can see classification name, count, and then form type name is incident. That's the one filter associated to this visual itself. You can have a filter on this page, which would filter out obviously the entire page. So things we do here would be, you know, if we're looking at reactive efforts or proactive efforts, we would filter by form type on that page. And then filters on all pages would be things like, um, you know, if we're looking at our training dashboard, we would say only show data where the employee is active. You know, if a person's left the company, we don't, we don't need to worry about the training anymore. So we just filter out all the active employees there. Um, these are changeable by the front end user. However, you can lock it and you can hide it from people um, editing it unless they have edit permissions to the report. All right. You can also go into advanced filtering and just like advanced find, you can go contains, does not contain, um, starts is empty, yada, yada, yada. Or, you know, you can go into um, top five. So if you're making a line chart and you know, maybe there's hundreds 
of um, you know values with form types being selected that don't really matter. You can just say you know top five, and then if you go into the fields pane on the right hand side, this is where all your your columns and tables are stored. If you go into form, for example, you can say you know top five form counts. And by hitting apply filter, that's how the filter works there. Let's close that out. Piece of All right. Um, so yeah, on the right-hand side, this is your, your fields table. Um, I have it set up across all the entity names that you would see in iTrack 365. So the second you have this report, we'll talk about how to make these tables have, you know, your respective clients, or your respective company's data inside of them. And then at the top here, I kind of stored the measures and their own tables. So if you click, for example, um, this, this card right here, you can see that this card is referencing this measure. And I can I sort of talk about it in the documentation as well. And then if you actually click the measure, you can see at the top here that this is what it's calling. It's looking for the total injuries for restricted work, which is this measure here, divided by total injuries, which is this measure over here. And as you go deeper, you can kind of see, you know, what the measures are actually doing. So that much like Excel, it's equal sum. And instead of calling for cells, you're calling for columns instead. Cool. And lastly, on the front end side of things, you have your, your visualizations. I'll just hop over to the reactive efforts page to show this. All right. So when you when you click a visual, you can kind of see it's a bit hard to see, but I'll try to make it bigger. You can kind of see these little gray, um, I guess, tabs on the top right, as well as these arrow keys showing. That means you've selected the visual. Once you selected the visual, you can see that this visual is working off the form type name accent, access, which is incident, and the form classification will actually be a drill down. So using these arrows up top here, you can hit the drill down function. And then from there, you can see you know, from the incident, we have this many injuries, this many motor vehicle injuries, and so on and so forth. And the value would just be the counts of forms submitted. If you hover over, you can see 46. Or if you go into this paint roller on the right hand side, you can add things like data labels, right? If I make it white and I say, you know, display inside, you can see that the, the count is there. You can add a title to your X and Y axis. You can get rid of the X and Y axis altogether. And this is kind of where you customize the chart. Um, and then if there's any sort of, you know, trend lines you want to show that's using this third third icon here of analytics it's a bit finicky um, i haven't really found a good use to it other than rolling averages or you know average across the board but the uh, depending on what visual you use different analytics will show up so if i select this um if i select this visual once again and let's say i want to see it you know horizontally or vertically i can just hit this little top right button and the visuals will start to change depending on what you've selected. Bar chart, donut chart, whatever you want to do, that's sort of the way you um, customize your graph there. So if I went into line chart, analytics feature now gives me a bit more options like I mentioned, right? Min, max, average, median, percentile. If you go back to the bar chart, all you'll get is that constant line. Cool. So that's everything on the front end. If I go into you know, next is the, the data itself. Uh, just on this left pane here, this little table icon. This is where, you know, you can uh, just go in and reference anything to make sure everything's correct. So if I go into the form column, for example, and I want to look at, let's see, what's a good example? I want to look at, you know, due date, date filters, you know, it's after, let's say, June 2020, and then I hit OK, just like Excel, your rows will filter, and on the bottom left here, you can kind of see how many forms are in your system, which would be 282, how many were filtered, and you can compare this to Advanced Finder CRM if you ever feel like there's a data discrepancy between what you're seeing in Power BI. Um, the only times you would really see a data discrepancy in this is, um, you know, uh, clear filter is if you've you know merged columns or merged tables, and I'll get into that, that have a many to one. Um, so as an example, if you're filling out a vehicle inspection list and you wanted to see the vehicle name in the table itself, 
The second you apply vehicle name to this form, one form can have many vehicles, which will um, you know, skew the number of forms you've actually submitted. The reason I'm saying that is into the next part of the, the report here is our data model. I spent, a, I spent a quite a bit of time here trying to link everything to the form table for the HSC Power BI. For training and procedures, it's a bit more complex than just a, a fancy circle. Um, but you can kind of see here that everything that needs to be related in Slice the Fund <coughs> is related in Slice the Fund. Kasim, I just want to stop you and say that is a great looking model. Um, I know that the relationships can be quite complex. So, um, so don't so something, something funny is they upgraded the report model here in the background. I hit upgrade and they skewed the entire design of it. So now for one of our clients, I have to go back in and replicate this entire circle. But yeah, I agree. Having a circle is nice because you can kind of just look at it and say, okay, which around the, around the block, where is employee and how is being related, right? But I appreciate the kind words. Um, and then from there, you know, you have your multi-level relationships. So for example, form will go into form field, and then from a form field, you can have form field list items, form field business units, or form field employees. For a facility, you can have facility types, and so on. So as you're going through, everything that I've sort of labeled as a two-way relationship, I use it for um, you know, slicing and dicing. So these can be changed if you're going to make your own reports. Um, however, everything else will just be uh, a one-way relationship. Um, from there, you know, form injury goes into all these fields and you can kind of, now you can navigate this a couple ways, right? I, pref I prefer the visual, especially if you're new to the iTrack system, because, you know, if, if you start as, for example, a field operator and you say, okay, I'm, a, I'm submitting a form and now I'm going into the back end, what does form link to? You can kind of go and see, you know, okay, contacts link to form, find the contact table and see how they're linked through contact ID. And then the data you want from the contact table would be contact name. So just by hovering over these lines, you can see the relationship fields by the highlights. You could also go into fields and it's a bit tougher to see, especially if you have an orange light filter on like myself. And if I select an employee, that's an employee too. You can kind of see a brief yellow highlight across the, uh, across the box here. So if you're looking for a specific table, selecting it on the right hand side will show it highlighted here. Or you can open up this manage relationships button on the top and it will actually just say from and to of all the tables in your um, in your um, system. Uh, and if you want to change that one way or many to one, it's as simple as double clicking a relationship either through this table through a line and you can actually say change the cardinality change the cost filter direction so if you want something to filter within itself you can say you know both of these tables should filter each other um, and you can change the um, you can change the relationship as well now the one thing that's um, you know you'll 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 see as you as you play on the data model if you need to um, you cannot have a circular reference and what that means is that, for example, if I wanted to link this employee ID of employee two to this employee ID of employee three, it creates a circle, as you can see with the lines. So you won't actually, Power BI won't know which ones to filter or what the preference is. So ideally, you want to keep things um, away from the main form table. However, this, this relationship model should be um, full enough for you guys' use at a base level anyways. And if you guys have questions about sort of, you know, new tables that aren't on this, you have questions about the relationship of, you know, just feel free to message support and we can uh, get back to you right away. Cool. Now we're going to talk about sort of connecting your database. We can do this in two different ways. Now, if you're going to use this data model in these tables, um, we'll use the power query. However, if you're going to just, you know, start from scratch, you, you're a master of eye track, you want to do things your own way, you can actually go into this little down arrow on get data hit more and then you want to go into common data services um, it is legacy that I spoke to Microsoft about that they said it's just a name change and it shouldn't go away anytime soon hopefully um, if you want to use the data verse we don't recommend it but it does require a SQL endpoint and it uses a tabular data service I think it's called a TDS so if I hit connect there
you know, it'll ask you for your server URL, you know, which would be HTTPS itrackdemo.crm3.dynamics.com. Uh, you know, we do want the, we want this to be reordered alphabetically. We don't want the display columns. We can hit okay. It will prompt for a login and you just use your, um, you know, your company email. Ideally get someone with, with system admin um, to log into your data set. That way you're not limited to any entities um, or if there's any companies within yourself, if you want to make a holistic uh, report across all your you know sublets or subsidi subsidiaries um, you want to make sure you're not limited by any rules within CRM um, from there once you log in uh, you'll just go into entities here now the difference between entities and system I'll talk about that briefly so if I open up the entities folder and I search for iTrack this is where all your iTrack entities will be listed um, and then if I go into the system so 653 entities, if I go into system, there will also be 653, maybe a bit more, but that number will stay the same. And if I go into iTrack again, all your iTrack entities will still be here. Now the only difference is you'll actually have relationship columns like you would in SQL. So for example, if you go into um, you know risk risk area, right? Or let's do risk matrix, start here. At the end of the table, you would actually then see sort of risk level as a column, and you can expand risk level from within itself. Um, it's, I don't recommend that method because the relationship model is set up. However, if you are getting used to um, kind of the system and how they're being related, I would recommend using the system setting as a testing purpose, more so than an actual viable purpose, All right? Cool, All right, so. The next thing you want to do is go into the Power Query, which is this table and pencil up here, and just hit Transform Data. And that leads you to this pop-up window here. Um, before I get into kind of how this is all set up, if I look at this iTrack underscore risk matrix like I just mentioned, and we go all the way to the right, looks like there's no relationship on this one, so I can't show you, unfortunately. That's unfortunate. I'll delete this for now. All right, so with this, um, with the way I set up Power Query, I did it in three kind of methods. We have the forms table, the injuries table, and then other queries. Other queries are just form task measures. These are actually just blank, so I can ignore these. However, if you go into the forms table, these will be your main entities, you know, your forms, your form vehicles, your form types, your form type fields, and so on. If you go into the injury tables, that'll be sort of, you know, the body parts, the types, the treatments. And if you go to lookup tables, that'll be your employee. These are sort of your um, dynamics out of box entities is the way I want to say it to an extent, right? Um, and the way we have this set up, so if I open up the um, form business unit table, this will be all the form business units in your system. And the second you guys do receive this Power BI PBIX file and you're customizing it, you won't see the data because you don't have the credentials for it. So what you'd want to do is on the right hand side here in the applied steps, you would actually just go to source. And then from iTrack demo, you would change that to, you know, company name .crm3 .com. Um, What that does is the entities or the, the columns or the fields inside the system should be identical. I say should, and I'll bring up the, um, the discrepancies in a bit. But once you hit source and hit enter and you log in, and you have to do this for all the queries on the left-hand side, eventually your data set will get published. Um, and then what happens is, for example, if I go into removed columns, uh, removed columns, and we look at this new image BI placeholder um, or new image BI URL, some with what I've seen in testing, some um, some dynamic systems actually have this in their system, these columns, while others don't. So you know, if you change this to company name .crm3 .com, Dynamics.com, you'll get a triangle on the left hand side here saying an error has occurred. For the most part, what I've only seen when I've uh, implemented clients is that these two columns, um, as long as, as well as modified on behalf of, on behalf by, it'll give you an error message up top here, um, do not exist in your system. So it's as simple as going to removed columns 
and then just deleting the code from up top here. And I'll show, kind of show you an example here. So if I go test, right? And if I, what I'm telling the system to do is remove column test, but obviously test doesn't exist, right? So you can kind of see the column test of the table wasn't found. And if you go to the bottom step, the last step, you actually can go to error and it will tell you where the error is being found. So here you would see new image BI placeholder modified on, modified on behalf by, and uh, unfortunately it just looks at the first one. So it might tell you modified on first and then you think you're good, so you clear it. Then I'll tell you the next one and so on. So I'm just gonna clear, test that here, but that's that's the only errors I've seen um, with the queries that come out of box, All right? And then just on the top here, really quick, um, you know, you have your advanced editor, which will actually allow you to see the entire code across the way. If you're more of a programmer, this might make more sense to you. Um, you don't have to use this advanced editor at all, because if I go into this column, for example, and I hit right click and I hit remove, the code is going to do itself. It'll say remove column I truck underscore form business unit um, in the language of M. So don't don't fret about the code that you're seeing in front of you. Um, you can also multiple select, remove other columns. You can move, um, you know, you can group on pivot. There's a lot that can be done and I won't get into the, the advanced of things because the data set is set up properly, um, but there's a there's an abundance of documentation um, in Power BI as well as the Power BI forums if you guys do have any questions. Um, so, you know, for example, something you might want to do is split this by level. So you can do is you can select the column, go into split column, for example, by delimiter. All right, and then I'll tell you, OK, how do you want to split it? If we say by hyphen and it automatically knows the hyphen seems to be the delimiter. Um, if you want to split it up to one level, leftmost, rightmost, there's a bunch of queries you can do with this. And this will not affect your, your data set and, and dynamics in any way, so do not worry about that. And then the other one that I've seen people use a lot is merging and appending. Um, and this, I kind of spoke to this earlier. So if I go into, you know, uh, let's go merge queries, for example. And you want to merge form business unit with, you know, let's say form, for example. All you'll do is you'll scroll, scroll down. You'll find the form business unit ID, merge it with the form business unit ID. It'll give you an estimated match, and by hitting OK, you can then expand the entire forms table for whatever reason into the form business unit table, or vice versa if you want to do it on the forms table. Um, the one thing to note here, and this is something that um, can be beneficial if you're making the relationships as well, is at the bottom here, the selection matches. If you know that the table, um, for example, if I was looking at the form table at the top there, and the form business unit on the bottom, it would say 11 out of 11, which means that that is the right key. So if you're ever worried about what key or what GUID or whatever ID you want to select, this is a good metric of um, finding out if the, if the relationship is solid. All right, um, on the top here, you can. this is where all the transforming is. I recommend just playing around with it and seeing what happens. All right, a big one would be formatting. Um, if you go into add columns, I know a big one here would be conditional column. I do recommend learning that as that'll help you with your visuals. And what a conditional column is, you can say, you know, if business unit equals, um, you know, north, then select one. And if business unit equals south, then select two, which is a pretty simple conditional column. Um, or you can actually do a custom column if you know the language of M. And uh, you can do some crazy data uh, and that anal analytics with this with this function here. Um, and then that's kind of all you really have to play around with. If you do not see this formula bar up top, I recommend going to view and then hitting formula bar that sort of hides and shows it instead of working through the advanced find feature or advanced editor feature, sorry. And so yeah, just as a recap quick with the power query, um, the data set should be set up. Um, I have removed a lot of the uh, I'm going to say garbage data. Um, so what I mean by that is if I go into the employee table, for example, with my out of box reports, I don't require anything other than employee name. However, if you want to add their employee address, for example, or their employee email to make some sort of report card, it's as simple as going on the right hand side, going to remove to other columns, hitting this little gear icon. 
searching for you know address and you can add as much as you please and once that's finished it'll actually upload it to the uh, data set as well um, as long as you do not remove the employee id you should be fine with any of your customizations cancel there and that's sort of how i've seen people use the system is just adding more columns in on it whatever moved we can kind of see here that the data that you have is pretty simple and pretty sleek across the lookup tables here contact id and contact name um, and then sort of you can kind of see it there also as i go for contact id the naming is contact underscore id contact name would be contact space name and then if i go into injured body parts we look at the code it would say code if it's just a numeric value that dynamics um, can understand body part code state code status code i don't recommend deleting these as i've seen some bugs where if you delete the body part code then the name won't populate so if you ever confuses why your data is not showing up i recommend just re-implementing this code I'm not sure why it is i've looked around i couldn't find an answer to it um, but like i said this kind of this table and the power query the way it's set up right now should fit you um you know at a basic level as long as you're doing any anything too crazy with the system and if you are and you have questions just feel free to message support and the final part i won't go too much into detail with this um, we do have our power bi and data model documentation if you are going to be using our out-of-box reports this kind of gives you an idea of how to um add your data set customize some of the changes that i've made so for example, it talks about you know, changing the, the source URL to your Dynamics 365 URL, changing some of the filters across your board. We'll talk more about this uh, in next webinar. And if I go down, the one thing I wanna mention as well, I'll just search for it. Link. All right, so there are some columns here um, in general customizations, where for example, forms form link is a column I've set up in Power BI. So if you go into any table, you can usually scroll to the right and you can actually navigate back to the portal. So you can kind of see here that I track demo is labeled as I track demo. You'd want to change that as uh, company name .net or whatever your, your I track portal URL is to make sure that these links work. So and these that, that's all documented here in the do, uh, documentation. The other thing I finished here is if you go back up to what page is this page 11 you can kind of see the connection to the form table i kind of explained what the employee does and how it's linked to the forms table altogether all right that's pretty simple uh nothing too crazy however um there is some valuable data here if you're learning the iTruck system that you need to understand and that's kind of the general navigation i was a bit fast if i overwhelmed you i do apologize but this video will be um published on youtube soon so if you guys have questions going forward just feel free to message support at itrack365.com uh, we also have a we also have a learning page um, as well as our webinars page that'll be coming uh, upcoming as well i believe the webinars page is itrack365.com slash webinars or as the learning page is itrack365.com slash learning where we have an abundance of how to's administrations user management and so on um, this user, user management one currently is outdated with our old modules, however it will be updated as we go on.